Good day everyone, Aussie Mark here. And today we're having a look at a really beautiful pocket knife, a traditional folder made by W.R. Case and Sons Cutlery Company from uh, Bradford, Pennsylvania, United States. This is the Case Canoe. I should say up front that I'd never really heard much about Case knives until I watched a, a series of reviews on another YouTube channel, ST Schmallhouse, by a gentleman called Stefan. And in particular his review of the canoe knife, as you see here in front of you, um, just captivated me. Terrific video, which I will link down below in the description, and highly recommended. Uh, it's probably one of the best knife reviews I've ever seen. And anyway, I decided to go off and buy a canoe, and it's led on to other purchases, but we'll get onto that in a minute. What I'd like to do is we'll just have a quick look at this one. I've been EDCing this knife um, as my work knife for um, probably about a month now, so I've had a little bit of real-world practical experience with it. And we'll talk about that, we'll talk about the stats of the knife and we'll get into the collectability and identifying marks and I'll try and cover everything. It might be a bit random, but we'll do the best we can with it. So as you can see there, it's a traditional slip joint folder, so there's no actual locking mechanism and it's got two blades. The blade on the left is a pen blade and the length of that uh, little pen blade is one and three quarter inch, that's the cutting edge, or 45 millimetres. On the right we've got a spear blade and the cutting edge on that one is two and a quarter inches or 57 millimeters. This particular knife that you have here is stainless steel in the blades. They're also available in chrome vanadium and there is at least one model I'm aware of which uses Damascus steel on the blades and it's uh, got some pretty exotic handle materials and it's quite an expensive one. The vast majority of them however do come in the stainless steel even the chrome vanadium it's not very common. The chrome vanadium, of course, is more subject to rust than stainless steel, so you do need to keep that a little bit oiled. Model options, well, anyone knows anything about case knives knows that they make an unbelievable range of, of knife, what they call knife patterns. Um, this particular knife is pattern number 62131, or 62131. Now what all that means is the number 6 donates that it's I've got a bone handle material, there's all numbers for the bone for the handle material, 6 is bone. The 2 means there's two blades. The 131, well that's actually the pattern number of the knife. So the canoe, any canoe you see, the last three numbers will always be 131. That's the pattern number. The purpose of use for this knife? Well back in the day this would have been, I guess, what we in modern day terms call an EDC knife. Um, these days it could still be used as that. Um, I've certainly been able to use that at work. It might be suitable for that in uh, particular regions where the laws prevent you from, for example, having a knife blade over three inches or whatever, you may not be able to have a locking blade. A traditional file like this is going to fit the bill quite nicely. Certainly it's a collectible, and I think it also just makes a very nice gentleman's um, folding knife. Very nice thing. Blades grind on these, both blades are full fat ground. The um, length of it open, and we're talking open length with the main blade open, or the spear blade open, is six and one eighth of an inch, or 156 millimetres. Closed up, 3 and 5 eighths an inch or 92 millimetres. As mentioned, the handle on this one is made of bone, called jigged bone, which means it's had a uh, pattern machined into it and it's also been dyed. Now this particular one has been dyed in old red and the handle jigging is a pattern called corn cob. I'm also going to put a link down below in the description to the uh, WI Case website. If you go over there, if you want to look, learn a bit more about these knives, you'll see a link there to what they call their Case College. And amongst other things, it'll talk about tank stamps, knife patterns, um, handle materials, the handle jigging that they use, the different types of pattern. Um, really quite an interesting um, site. It's a world unto itself and the real enthusiasts um, lose themselves in the idea, say, for hours and hours on end. Just to get the rise of the stats out of the way, the weight on the knife is 2.7 ounces or 76 grams. So that's the stats done. You beauty, we say. Alright, let's get the knife in hand. Move this out of the way for the moment. Let's talk about my experiences actually using this knife. Bring it up nice and close here. Look, this is a pocket worn model, as you would have might have noticed on the box there. And what that means is it had a bit of extra hand finishing and it's a very smooth finish and it gives it that feel, or what case say they're trying to achieve there is the feel that it's been in the pocket for some years. Um, it's very nice. It's just you can just see that little texture there, the colour is very vivid, it runs from a, a kind of light pinkish colour there in the middle almost to a black and all shades in between. Just turn that around, hopefully catching the light. I don't think it's doing it justice. It's a really beautiful thing. Silver nickel bolsters on all of these, and you can see down in there, if we turn it over, brass liners, which I think just looks really, really classy. Very, very nice. Now, it's a thumb nick opening, of course, being a traditional folder. The thumb nick you do need to use on the little pen blade, 
to get that out like so. And talking to the tank stamps, I'll have a look on there. Just bring my hand up behind to show you that. See, they're made in the USA. And there was that pattern number I mentioned earlier, which is on the small blade, 62131. Again, 6 is for the bone, 2 for the number of blades, 131 is the canoe pattern. We'll put that blade away. And me being a lefty, one of the reasons I like this knife is that I don't have to use the nail nick on the main blade, which is what I use mostly. A lot of people don't realise, for lefties, a traditional fold of the nail nick, you need to hold the knife in your right hand, using your left thumb to open it, and then swap hands on it. However, happily for me, not on this particular knife. There's an awful lot of that spear blade exposed, so I can quite easily just pinch that between my fingers and open it up, which is great. Another reason I like this particular um, case pattern very much. I'll just fold that around and we'll try and get a look at the stamping on the main blade there. You can see the case logo, and you'll also notice a series of stars or asterisks and dots. Now, they change year to year. This particular series here indicates, I'll try and get in the light, hope that's showing up. If you um, go to the case college, you'll be able to read up on this. That indicates that this knife was manufactured in 2010. Now, I'll just put this one aside for a moment and I'll bring up another one to show you. And this particular one, if we have a look at the stamping on that, you'll notice that the dot is missing from that point there. That indicates that this knife was manufactured in 2011. I'm not sure how the, how the patterning will go on from here on, but I would dare say in 2012, most likely, that dot there will disappear. Now that'll happen for 10 years, and what will then happen at that point is that Case will change that logo there, and I will do something exactly the same or very similar and they'll start over and there'll be a, a 10 year period. So that's quite interesting in itself. This little, little badge there, you'll see there Case Triple X, brass pins, beautifully finished, all nice. Those two are flush, that one's quite just a little bit proud because that's like a dome head one. Now, I said I was going to talk about how I found this in practical use. Well, in, in real terms, I haven't used the pen blade much. I do tend to use this as the blade that I use all the time. You could use that one. It's kind of a backup blade. What I'm really impressed about this knife is just how comfortable it is. Being a traditional folder, I think a lot of us are used to the modern things and we assume that the traditional folders probably aren't as good in the hand. Well, not so in this case. The designers certainly knew what they were doing. If you look how my hand sits on that knife now, my forefinger sits in there like a choil in that shape that's caused by the back of the handle and into that pen blade and I can hold the knife like that and it is extremely comfortable. And again, you'll notice this little curvature just here. If I wish to choke up, I move that finger forward. I've now got a forefinger grip on the knife and I can bring my thumb up on that blade for detail work. It's really very, very comfortable to, knife to use. I'm totally impressed. Um, you know, you could, could consider that's by accident, but I prefer to think it's by design. The craftsmen who designed this and these old traditional folders, I've got to tell you, they knew a thing or two about designing a knife. As I mentioned, not a locking blade, so using a knife like that is an additional security feature. There's, there's no real way it can close on you. I should also mention, the lock-up's nice and tight. The springs on these are very strong. I honestly feel quite safe using I don't think that there'd be any likelihood of that closing. And again, of course, in a slicing motion, when you slice it, the pressure on the blade is going back that way and it, it really can't close up on you. The one problem with them is you probably notice them getting fingerprints all over it. Um, they do show up fingerprints like you wouldn't believe because it's such a, um, a high shine or high gloss type finish. But that's a minor problem. If it's sitting in your pocket and you're using it all day long, no drama. Came nice and sharp. I've only had to touch the edge up a couple of times. I've been using the Sharp Maker. Um, case do provide these with around about a 30 degree inclusive edge so the um, sharp maker works very nicely and it takes an edge very easily and holds it reasonably well so I've been happy enough with that just for general sort of work it's just light use I haven't um, gone batoning logs or anything with it I don't think that would be appropriate so that's my experience with the knife for a gentleman's pocket knife um, I think you could do a lot worse it's certainly um, if you're in an area as I say where the law prevents you from carrying certain more shall we say tactical style knives this is quite a decent option now, the other thing I mentioned with these is that they're, of course, a very collectible knife. And we might just talk a little bit more about that in the next part of this video. And we'll talk about what is fast becoming a, uh, a really a, quite an obsession for me. All right, back in a moment. Okay, so we're back. Oh, I must apologise for the background noise in that first section of the video. We had a late afternoon storm blow up here, just so I was filming that. And... Um, it's gone now, had a bit of hail, a bit of heavy rain and wind and all that sort of thing, but 
we're good to go now. Right, so I mentioned I was going to talk about the collectability, and as you can see, um, the obsession's taken a little bit of hold of me. I've now got six of these things, and to be honest, I think there's probably going to be more in the future. Um, I'm really just enjoying the, the collecting of them and, and the variations. With case knives, there's various ways you collect them. I suppose you could collect different patterns, you could collect you know, all different patterns of maybe a favourite handle colour or, or whatever. I like this um, particular design a lot, and at this point in time, I'm intending to concentrate on the canoe. One of the things I wanted to um, to mention there before, a couple of things I did miss with all the noise, is just the line of this particular knife, the symmetry. Notice there's no sort of sharp edges, there's a slight edge here, but the way it flows, everything's just nice and smooth. And I probably should have explained why it's called the canoe, which is probably pretty obvious to most of you anyway. If you look at the actual shape of the handle there, the way that comes around, up here like so, it's very reminiscent of a canoe design. Some of the other variations in these, besides just the handle materials and handle colours, is the bolsters. Um, one I'm planning to buy in the future is what they call pinched bolsters. So at this section just here, there's an angular sort of section on the bolster where it's been, if you like, pinched in. So that's a slight variation. Um, you can also get different engravings and things. A couple that I'll just show you here. Some of them got blade etching, like that one, which is, I think, really cool. This is the chrome vanadium one. Which is the only one I've got in chrome vanadium. But you can see it's got that lovely canoe on there. You can definitely see the similarity to the handle shape. Now, speaking of the chrome vanadium, one of the things I should mention, also on the small blade on these, if we bring that up, if you just open it just right, you'll be able to see down the bottom there, where it's got USA and the patent number, underneath it says CV. That tells you this knife has chrome vanadium. On a Damascus one, you would see DM, and of course on the vast majority which are the stainless, if you open it just to the right angle and look down there you'll see SS which stands for stainless steel. So it's just something I meant to cover earlier and oh, I forgot as happens with me fairly often. So what we'll do now, I'll just talk through some, what I've bought here, what I've got, the different colours and patterns etc. This was actually the first one I bought, I saw this colour and I was just quite captivated by it. The other thing you'll, um, I'd like you to take note of as we go through these is the different badges and the different shapes. Many of them have the oval, particularly the limited editions, but sometimes you get these different shaped badges like this one here. Now this one is in clover colour they call it, and I'm really hoping this shows up in the light. You'll see there the different colours and the jigging pattern on this is called saw cut. And hopefully you'll be able to see there why it's called that. And in where the saw cutting is, obviously it goes to quite a deeper green. Really very attractive. If um, you're an Irishman or something and you're looking for a, a knife that suits your homeland's colours, this is your knife, definitely. I, I just love green, I always have done, and this is a very rich, vivid green. It, it runs from almost right at the edge, just over here there's like a, a bluey aqua, and then it gets this incredibly dark and deep and rich green. Really beautiful. We'll just show the reverse side. A little bit lighter, oddly enough, on that side. But again, it shows up what they call that saw cut jigging quite well. So that's that one. Just put that in. I'm trying not to get fingerprints all over these, and I really don't want to wear gloves whilst I do it. This next one is a limited edition one. Now, that case to all limited editions, this is limited edition number 25, and you'll see on the blade of these ones, not just in canoes, but they normally do these in a different range of models, but all with the same colour of handle and jigging. And they do 3,000 of each pattern. So there would have been 3,000 canoes in this particular colour made. And it's got that on the blade there. So as we, this is limited edition series number 25, and this is in sea green, which I really like a lot, and the jigging pattern, this is called Rogers, it's much more textured than the one we've just seen, it's quite rough, and again, beautiful variation on the colour as it goes in, the, you get the deep, deep colours in the jigging, and then it fades away to that light colour on the outside. I believe the badge, and this is generally known as the bomb shaped badge, oddly enough on the Case College they don't explain the badges, so I really wish they did, but um, they explain everything else. One of the things I like about these is not only the different colours, the different jigging patterns, but also the different badges, so there's just infinite variety. In fact, on the knife website where I buy most of my knives in the US, currently they're running 37 different varieties of the canoe knife alone in stock. And I was looking on the case site and I've already found one they just produced, which I fully intend to buy because it's pretty gorgeous. So that's that one there. That's a really nice handle. The next one, I must say, is at the moment my favourite handle. This one, they're all in bone, I should stress these. This is a barn board jigging pattern. You can see there it's got the um, striations there, or the, or the grooves in line with the handle. 
and this is in ocean blue and it I, I really really hope the camera picks this up for you guys just stunning colors light blue to the outside coming through your medium blue dark blue just on the edge where the jigging starts in to an almost black in the middle and again another different badge shape on there we'll turn it around so you can just see the other side without the badge Th this one truly is absolutely stunning even when I've got the collection on display this one just leaps out try and get that up nice and close and focused hope you can see that I'm fairly certain the camera will not do this justice a beautiful beautiful piece really gorgeous we'll move on to the next one this is the one I just showed briefly the chrome vanadium and it's got the canoe etching and this one is a beautiful beautiful um, amber colored bone and it's got peach seed jigging and the colors in this one I know Stefan showed this in his video as well um, just lovely from a sort of a light beige through to a honey color deep browns almost to a black um, again I'm quite certain the camera's not doing this justice a really beautiful beautiful coloration very very nice indeed So I'll move on to the next one, which we've already seen a little bit. Again, I'll just show it just to, um, you know, that's the pocket worn one that I've been using as a, uh, I, was, I bought this one for a carry blade. Don't know how much I'll carry it, to be honest, um, but I will have this as a user. It will probably sit in the collection when I'm not carrying it. And again, that was the old red colour. You can see in detail there in the, what did I say, the um, corn cob jigging on this one. And it's quite smoothed out. You can see the difference there. It's quite smoothed and the colour's there. As mentioned before, really very, very nice. It's a nice knife. I like this one. Actually, I like all of them. This one here, this is another limited edition, as you can see by the stamping on the blade there. And this is uh, I think the last one I bought, actually. This is a watermelon colour, they call it. It's kind of um, oh, it's a pinkish colour, I guess, but definitely watermelon coloured. The jigging pattern on this is Aberdeen, so all these knives have got a different jigging pattern. And you'll see that it's got the bomb badge on it. Not quite as much of a colour difference in this one. There is, um, it is lighter towards the edge where the bolsters are and slightly deeper towards the middle. But I'm not sure the camera is going to pick that up particularly well. It's, it's a little bit more subtle in this particular colour. It's a very nice thing. But uh, as I say, for, um, for sheer beauty, the blue, as you can see, even just in that group, the blue is, to my mind, just a stunning colour. Really lovely. So that's my collection as it stands at this moment. So um, I've got a, a little flotilla of canoes here, I guess, and there's every chance the way things are going, if the obsession will end up a fleet of canoes, but that's okay. I'm all right with that. Um, if the collection does continue to grow, I'll probably at some stage do an update vid and, and share that with you guys. Anyway, my conclusion on these, if you were looking for a traditional folder, maybe just a, something to carry for a gentleman's folder, a canoe's a good knife, or a case of certainly a lot of other patterns. Um, but be aware, you will almost certainly run the risk of being bitten by the collecting bug and who knows where that might take you and how much it might cost you. The one thing for sure is you'll probably have a heck of a lot of fun with it. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the review. Sorry if it's gone a little bit long. Best wishes everyone. Bye for now.